Imagine just giant garbage bags from great, 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 great grandparents being passed down to great, great grandparents, to great, great, same garbage bags, same garbage bags to your parents. And weirdly, there was barely any real deep conscious work going on until now. So all the garbage bags from your history, all the giant secrets from your alcoholic great grandpa, all the trauma of the, the crap that your grandma went through when she was a kid, all of that shit is being held by your child right now. And if you listen to the now, you're telling that kid, we can let go of it. And we can change our family's history. This is the biggest point, is that now is all you have. And I point that out because I know how fun day one was. And I went to bed connecting to the now. I woke up at like 2 a.m. going, man, yesterday was so good. Oh, I loved it so much. And then I couldn't sleep for a minute because I was like, yesterday was so good. I can't wait for tomorrow. And then I just meditated a little more. And I heard, oh, you're attached to yesterday. You're connected to yesterday and you're attached to tomorrow. And then it goes, so just now. You don't even get to let go of it. You just connect to now. Do you see the difference? When people say, let go of it, you're really picking it up. When someone says, I got to let go of this relationship, this old story, I got to let go of my opinion of that person, you just picked it up, right? It's already trying to fall off of you. It's already leaving. So every time you say, I got to let go of this, you're actually picking it up. So instead of me going, oh man, I got to let go of how good yesterday was and whatever tomorrow will be, I just hear now because that's the only thing true. Right now is the only thing true. Deep breath in. Release it. Watch yourself just let go of yesterday by you connecting to now. Watch it let go of it. You can't let go of it, but it will. It will. Can you feel the energy that holds on to yesterday or holds on to tomorrow? As you connect to the now, it will release it. You don't get to release it. It will. Feel this moment right now. Just feel what's here. Feel what you feel in your body. Feel what you feel in your heart. Feel what's here. Think of how much power is in this moment and how much you don't have to be attached to any circumstance if you're connected to the now and how much abundance is your natural right. It's just naturally what you are. Joy, abundance, freedom right here. Now, how much could come into your life? And ironically, how much would you not be attached to what comes into your life if you were connected to this now? In other words, what it's trying to do is so much bigger than what you can see. But the more you're just connecting to here, the more you're safe for amazing things to come into your life. The world mirrors you. If you start to feel you're fully abundant now, you're fully here now, you're just joy now, you're just love now, now patterns will freak out. The inner child that goes, no, life is about fixing an issue so I'm not abandoned. Life is about not getting hit. Life is about not being shamed. Has no job. But in this now, you are becoming the space. You are becoming the space for that child. So in this space right now, you might notice that the child is a little bit quieter. Is anyone feeling that? The inner child inside of you maybe is there, but is also feeling a little bit safe and a little bit dissolved. I saw a lot of tears yesterday. There were probably some more this morning. You're becoming more the space. Now, if you did that in one day, and not to go too into the future, but what does that imply? If you did that in one full day, what does that imply? Now, if you go to the gym a whole day, I'm sure you'll be sore the next day, but you're not going to see that many results, even if you went all day in one day. But you saw a ton of results in one day of connecting to yourself. So what could that imply? Now, without it being the specifics, like that means this and this and this, feel the frequency of what that implies. Wait till we're good at this. 
Like, wait till you realize the now is the only thing you are because everything else is a temporary thing. Everything else is a temporary thing that comes and goes. Your power is in not attaching to the temporary, which just changes based on awareness. And all we're doing is raising our awareness to a level we can't go back from. We're raising our awareness more and more and more. And your only issue in your life, no matter what your circumstance is, is an awareness issue. That's the only issue. If you don't have an issue with work, you don't have an issue with that other employee that you can't stand, you don't have an issue with that ex, you don't have an issue with money, you have an awareness issue. That's it. The only job you have is to raise your awareness and you do that by actually connecting to the now. But to do that, the pattern has to go through little things, boredom. The pattern has to go through freaking out that it has no job. You've identified as a you that has a job of fixing trauma. That's all the job is. The ego, the story of I, your inner child, is just a story you created to not feel trauma. That's what the usual I is. If you were a child, let's say when you, you were a child, most of you were. If you were, though, for the people who were children, I don't know if anyone was born around 30, but <laughs> when you were a child, let's say you went through a thing where, I don't know, you got a D and you got hit for it. A parent hit you because you got a bad grade. What do you need to do? The child doesn't have the ability to process that and truly release it. It's too scary for a five-year-old to process trauma. They're new on the planet. They don't even know what the hell's going on. Just everyone's bigger than them, loud and scary, right? And the child doesn't know anything. And most of us, those people that were big and scary, also were the ones that fed us and housed us. How horrifying. So you gotta live with them. And you don't know why you're here. Like, just feel for that little five-year-old. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what these giant people are. I don't know what that, whatever, dad that was drunk all the time, that needed me to shut up all the time, or the mom that only liked it when I did this or was proud of me for this. All you do is go, I have to prevent myself from getting hurt. And then when you get hurt, like you get a bad grade and someone slaps you for it, you go, well, that was horrifying to me, but you don't have it consciously. The body just goes, that was horrifying to me. So we need to never feel that again. So we can hide from that person, or we can always get straight A's, right? So, okay, here comes this achiever, this person that always gets straight A's, or hides from that person and then says, all people like that person are scary and dangerous. So they just create straight A's or whatever it is. They achieve, achieve, achieve. Then they're getting like rewards for it. The parents like this, they always get straight A's. This is where an I is forming. I always achieve, I always whatever. You got an I going on. But what's under that I? Don't hit me. Don't slap me, don't yell at me. Don't do a thing that scares me. Don't change, don't become mad, don't leave me. That's still going on. So you have a false identity sitting on top of that, right? Don't abuse me, don't whatever, under that. that, that that's the I, that's the story of I. And then we start to follow it up in our whole life. We say sentences like, I worry a lot, I procrastinate, I overachieve, I always do this, I always money issue, I always with relationships, I. Bullshit on that I. That is not you, because you're crying that eye out, and weirdly, you're still here. If that was you, when you cried it out, you would have died, right? You would have died if that was you. So what you'll notice at these events that I see is every limitation is a lie, and all we do is go in there. See, our problem is we usually don't go in there. We sit on top of it because it would be death to the false eye that got love in a specific way from egos, from parents' egos in a more unconscious time. That's not you. This now is you.
So why did yesterday feel so good? Well, for a second, even though there was transforming and all kinds of stuff, maybe that's the answer, whatever your breakthrough was, or that I feel so loved by you for me. Oh my God, that's it. Now I'm seen by my dad. That kid got awoken at 2 a.m., right? Now I'm seen by my dad. That now looks like 700 people. That's what my dad looks like. Okay, now I'm seen, right? Or by my mom. Like, see that I'm legitimate, mom, right? So for a second, the false eye got what it wanted, so it feels like the trauma's not seen because it's loved, and I, and I caught it. I just meditated, and it goes, ah, ah. And in the old days, by the way, when I did those events, that kid was active, and I didn't know it. And I did not sleep very much between day one and day two. And day three, I, like the night of day two, I rarely slept. Why? Because I did so great. And then that ego goes, more, see me, look at me, like love me, everyone see me. I did. And then, of course, you, you go home and just, if you're dating someone, they'd be like, do the dishes. And you're like, you're not like them. Like, it's not, I'm just, <laughs> you, love me that much. Like, love me like fans love me. Like, you need to, which is such an unfair bar to put on any human being, Right? That's, this is why you see child stars get into drugs. They, this is where they're acclimating to their loved at fan level, at, at, at this very high level, right? I know that it's a known thing. To, it's amazing and powerful and challenging to leave a world of lack. It's so hard to leave a world of abundance, too, right? Oh, my God, because now your cage is golden, and they're throwing rewards into it, and you're getting love, and all this different stuff is happening. Oh. Man, and so I felt the high for a second, but I have a high enough awareness to catch it. And it goes, now please, like now please. And then I watch the little boy be seen by me again. That's all the little boy needs is to be seen by me, right? We gotta cut out the middleman. Of course, a byproduct can be that he can be seen by you, but not more than I see him. Can you do that with your partners and your friends and your ex and your mom and your kids? Can you see yourself the most versus I'm only seen by my kid, I'm only seen by my mom, I'm only seen by the people that are the worst at seeing me, <laughs> right? It's fine that you see me, but tell my husband that. I wish he understood. And then you leave the kid and go, who's the worst at seeing me? Okay, that's the one I need to see me. Not that I see me and they don't have to see me, right? We pick the hardest one because then if that person sees us, then our parent sees us. We go, okay, my dad abandoned me, so who's just like that? I got to fix my dad. That's what the ego wants to do. The poor ego wants to fix everything. And it, and it fixes things by finding the similar thing. So, oh, that person left me? Okay, now I want to date the kind of person that will leave me so that I can change them into not. Now, the highest goes, I'm just going to be with me, and then there will be a match. Who's someone who would just naturally be with me versus finding the most abandoned people and convincing them to not leave you? Do you get what I'm saying? So the ego goes, what is exactly like the trauma in my childhood? I'm going to change that. The soul goes, okay, we're just going to find the real love within ourselves and then allow the match to just happen and you lose your addiction to the circumstances, right? You're connected to a full, true, real, whole love of the now. This love is bigger than the relationship love. You can have the relationship love, but don't make it bigger than the now. A relationship without the now is attachment, right? A relationship without the now, and if you're not connected to the now and they're your only source of happiness, that's attachment. And you can tell it's attachment because if they leave you or they're with someone else, you're mad. Is that love? Think about that. You better not. Imagine a world where it's not that you're releasing control and everyone can hurt you. It's that you're really surrendering to a level of love and light that only has the best naturally that match that. 
other things that are protecting their light will not be, it's fine. They don't, it won't work. It's a different world. And many of them will just open up because your permission and your knowing. The now is your new spouse. Still stay in a relationship, but your now is the new spouse. This now, man, so much more can come into your life. So much more world can change. So many miracles. Think of how many miracles you've seen without this connection. Like, think of how many miracles you've seen just from making a higher choice or doing these different things. Now, we're still 99% belief in our body that it's not that miraculous or that we're just these small separate selves, that we're one of 8 billion people on the planet, which means you're moving at one eight billionth of your potential because all of those people are you. You're one. This is a fact. As we keep doing this work, you will discover if these things are falling apart, the things that are falling apart, aren't these things that are falling apart the only thing that separate us? The story of, well, I'm this age and you're this age, the story of I make this money and you make this money, aren't those the things that are falling apart? The only thing that creates the illusion that you're separate than me if we go by whatever, gender or skin color or anything like that, we create separation and go, I'm this and you're this. And what do you need to stay separate? The history of those things. Your history is this, my history is this. So I'm going into the past and we're now different. We're now different. You're separate from me. Well, weirdly, you can cry out that we're different shit and still be here. This life is about to become so miraculous for us. Do you feel what I'm saying? There is no separation. You can hear from every person that we worked with yesterday. They had this illusion of separation. Illusion of separation. I'm this story. And then we would go, are you? And then there would be tears. And Jeremy would be up here doing a TED Talk all of a sudden. <laughs> right? It was amazing. Whoa, when he spoke from the heart, which is the true place, he said, when you're speaking from the heart, everything's taken care of, you're loved. There was no talk of history. There was no talk of his past. There was no talk of separation. There was no talk of timelines. Weirdly, content just flowed through this guy who said at the first half when he was in the head, he can't feel. And he created a timeline that says, I always can't feel, right? Then he got into his heart. There was no history. There was no history when he got into his heart because your heart has no history. When you're in your heart, you have to transcend guilt because your heart has no history, right? You feel that? Deep breath in. Release it. Your heart has no history, which means your heart has no future. It's just now, and it'll be now again, and now it's now, and now it's now, you can't deal with it with a timeline, right? I always try to get over this. No, nope. that's you ignoring it even now. I'd love to be there for this pain, but I've always, you just left now. You avoided the pain with the illusion of the past that we can't ever go to. Isn't that weird? I can't go to the past. I can't go see your past. You can tell me all about it in the now and think you're avoiding the now, but you're really in the now, just fighting it with a thing you think is the past, right? Deep breath in, release it. The only thing blocking you from your connection to your heart is your desire to keep a false self alive. Your 100% abundance, your 100% joy, your 100% miracles. You're 100% miracles. You really feel that. And if you accept that and you're willing to go through a few days of not knowing what the hell's going on and the pain of the child falling apart, you realize the child is making your parents' egos your God. Right? That's what the child is. The child inside of you is making your parents' egos, which was their conditioning from their childhood, which was their parents' conditioning from their childhood, and it doesn't get better as you go farther back. <laughs> like, right? 
It's just imagine, imagine just giant garbage bags from great, 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 great grandparents being passed down to great, great grandparents to great, great, same garbage bags, same garbage bags to your parents. And weirdly, there was barely any real deep conscious work going on until now. So all the garbage bags from your history, all the giant secrets from your alcoholic great-grandpa, all the trauma of the, the crap that your grandma went through when she was a kid, all of that shit is being held by your child right now. And if you listen to the now, you're telling that kid, we can let go of it. And we can change our family's history. You understand that? Because if you alchemize it, you don't have the same history. It's not a dishonoring of what they went through, but love heals everything. So if we listen from the now, we can, first of all, just end this line of garbage bags going on, and we're not handing it to our kids as much. In fact, they'll hopefully be way better at even transcending whatever remains that we couldn't get. But we are, cre you see how it's actually true that we're creating a new world through the self. You have these great, great, great grandparents. Oh my God, horrible stuff. You go way, way back. We're in Viking times. Right? <laughs> like we're in crazy shit. It just sucks as you keep going back. And the consciousness wasn't ready. Like you go through different dimensions of consciousness, right? Like in the past, there's people that just like the highest they knew out of survival is you are what you do. Before that, there wasn't even a knowing of self. Like it wasn't even that. There wasn't even a knowing of you as a separate, it's just like rocks and plants. They don't know, you know. I know there's a few plant experts. Actually, they know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but... <laughs> But can you feel that, just that line being transcended? Not by your child transcending it. Your ego can't transcend it. But it doesn't have to hold it anymore. And even more importantly, you don't have to run or move from that kid anymore. We just take a deep breath in. Release it. Let, the, let yourself not know what to do. Let all the patterns come up of then maybe I'd be bored, right? The idea that the now has any boredom in it is hilarious, right? It's so miraculous and can do so much. But we're just all addicted to some result level. So everything that's not some good, positive thing, like you achieved something, is just, is just boredom. Just existing is boredom. This is the most powerful adventure you'll ever go on. You, right now, being here and letting it take over. It is you. We undo the idea that you is the pattern. I want to dare you to stop saying I when you talk about anything limiting. You say she or he, right? You say she's scared that. You see the difference? Already, we, we start, that's a way to start the practice. You can say I when you're talking about the now, right? Which is really just I am. But the kid is not you. It's a pattern. That's all that was created to protect yourself. And boy, what a, thank you. I'm so sorry, five-year-old, that you had to protect yourself from that giant, dad or that scary, angry mom, all these people who did not have the ability to feel. So as time went on, they just repressed it more and more and more and just either numbed it or yelled or, or, or achieved a ton and couldn't feel. Like, and we got to, even from this now, the now even has compassion, not only for the kid that you were, that you experienced being for a while, but also for our parents' kids. Because they weren't, like, if we were our parents in that time, we would not have had this awareness and we would have been the same, right? You, if you had exactly your dad's biology, history, parents in the exact same time, you would have been your dad, right? So we just in this now have compassion for the boy in your dad. And if, same story with your mom, right? If everything was the same, you would have been your mom. 
If you're born in your mom's story at her time with her parents, her history, her biology, everything, her, her brain chemistry, you'd be your mom. The now sees all that. It doesn't play the game that that person's good or that person's bad. It just is like it is, and our job is to learn love. And the now weirdly can hold space for the things that seem the hardest for our egos to love. And as you become the now, you start to have a compassion and go, I, I, I actually feel compassion for that person. You got to hear the difference between hearing that and that meaning, so hang out with someone who's treating you horribly or anything like that. You still make choices that are the highest you, but you can undo your egoic, they shouldn't be that way. You can undo your egoic argument with, because that's only you arguing with you, because the people you don't like are you. It's on, that's why they show up in your dreams, right? You'll be dreaming, and there's that person that you keep not liking and they're there, but the, you're making them. You're, they're in your brain. You're sitting here with a false avatar of you within all of you, mad at that person. I, I've had that. I've had people that I really feel triggered by. They show up my dream nightly. And it's going, yeah, we're purging the idea that that's not you by getting you to see them in your reality over and over and over again until you have so much compassion for yourself and them. So much that there's just a release and tears and an understanding. And then you think, well, if I do that, then I lose all my power. No, 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 you're, you're getting so much more power. Your love gives you so much more power. Your, your deep desire to understand. Because anyone that triggers you is triggering something that you don't want to look at inside of you. Anyone that triggers you, that, that person has dark energy, that person, whatever, well, what are, they, what are they bothering? It's inside your body. So what they're triggering is what you don't want to look at in you. And what a gift that they're doing that. What a gift that what is not seen in you can be seen through the people you perceive are your enemies. That's in your body. And what's inside your body? As I say that, maybe you can think of someone that triggers you. Notice what you feel. And if I take the circumstance and we do circumstance, the exercise we did, circumstance, inner child, now. Okay, think of someone that really triggers you. <sighs> now we go, take them away now. What do you feel? Be there for what you feel because we can really do some really quick healing here. What do you feel? Unseen? Unloved? Angry, abused, sad, abandoned, lonely, deep breath in. Be there for that. Say to the pattern, you're allowed to be whatever that is in my body. Can you say that out loud? You're allowed to be. <sighs> Receive that. I want you, this is deeper stuff. This is like we're in the colon now. Do you feel that? Like we're deep in the colon. <laughs> because the last few years it's just been okay this is seen this is seen this is seen this is seen okay now this is what's left just right in the colon the upper colon dr kim will speak soon and she'll tell us where in the colon your unconsciousness is right this is the last of those areas those are the areas you didn't want to see but the world will end up seeing all of those energies. And you can be happy knowing that the people that are triggering you will end up having to do that work too, right? They will do that. They're, they're triggered by you while well, they got you in their colon. <laughs> right? The people that are mad at you, you're triggering their colon. Do you get what I'm saying? Right? Because they have an inner child that wants you to be a certain way and you have an inner child that wants them to be a certain way. And it just feels unseen. And as you become the now, it sees that too. It will alchemize the whole thing. The world will mirror that. Think about a world where, do you already feel right now from this place? I want you to feel the triggers in your body are lighter, like there's less charge to them. Does anyone feel that? What does that imply? If the charge in your body is lighter, 
maybe we're moving into a triggerless world. I want you to imagine a world where everything to you is as it is. Because the trigger is things should be how my ego thinks it should be. So we now are going to a triggerless world. Well, if we are in a world where everything is as it is, dark stuff won't work anymore. Because it's all coming to light. The stuff that we're rescuing by doing this event will not be possible in the world that's created through you. Right? That just won't happen. Because it needs our blindness and our insistence on our small self and our denial of what is. It needs our insistence on our egoic self and our denial of what's true. That's why you're heroic. Sometimes when I talk to people about the event that I'm doing at this one, I mention child trafficking is what the money is going to, and I watch them turn away and not want to talk about it, right? I understand, and you're heroic to, to be here and hear this. But remember, turning your head away from what is doesn't mean it doesn't exist, right? So we can heal this shit much quicker by hearing what's true and getting good at even hearing another perspective, hearing your partner. Can you hear your partner even if they're blaming you for something and just hear them and hold space for what they're saying even if you know they're wrong and then lovingly hear that, honor that and see if your side's allowed too, right? And then when you go, if there's sides, is that me? Like, do you have another side? In oneness, are there sides? Is that person who's telling you their side you also? So the universe says all sides are trying to come to light. An argument is the belief my side, not yours, should come to light. Right? You're wrong, so it's just about my side. In a universal thing, it goes, well, both are true in this world. The universe works in paradoxes. You also have a point, and I have a point. It's not just that's only true and that's not, right? All perspectives have a point, right? But if they're repressed or called the wrong point, they can lash out more. They can, they're, they're being told that. It's up to you to bring the light of what's true in you and what's true in them because they're also you. They're also you. Undo the egos triggered by that for a second. They also have a point that's also you. That's, can you imagine that person that you were arguing with is also you just arguing with you? Like, isn't this the dream just out loud? Right? The now cares about what is felt in you, and the now cares about what they feel too. The now is unconditionally loving, and as you keep doing this work, you will become that because that's actually you. You'll not go back into the child much more because you're so aware. And as we keep doing today, we're going to up the awareness more. You're going to have more evidence and more shifts and more moments that tell you, holy shit, like I am not that small story. And as it was cried out, remember, it's permanently released. Whatever just came out is permanently released. You're more than now. And do you notice how when you have a breakthrough, if you had a breakthrough yesterday or this morning, how much more that's the thing that you want to feel than an external thing? Do you notice how much like this beats finding a partner, <laughs> right? I got to find a partner or find God, right? Like this seems to be cooler. You can have a partner, especially if the partner can help you move to God, right? If that, wow, it would be an expansive next step in my life to be seen beyond me, that's great. But do you notice how funny it is to be like, I gotta get the, I gotta get a Porsche. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what? I gotta get a Porsche? Isn't that dumb? <laughs> like, enjoy it, but is that the highest thing? You know what my prep work for this event was? Me standing in the green room and going, totally, and then walking onto the stage. <laughs> like, it's got everything. Like, it's crazy. Like, my prep work is just being here. My prep work is just being with you. 
You know, it's just being, it's just being. People this whole week asked me, like, are you, pre- are you prepared for it? And I realized that, that the implication is the moment of the event is bigger than the moment that I was in with them. And I'm, I'm, I'm enough connected to the moment now to know that that moment that I'm in a coffee shop being asked that is as important as this moment. And all the prep work is, is instead of me writing note after note and being like, I'll say this and this and this, the prep work is now. Now. And surrendering attachment to what happens. Surrendering that it has to go well seems to make it go better. Do you see that? Being okay with whatever is and really sitting there and being in surrender and saying to God. And I noticed like yesterday we were saying was just so flawless. Like, it was just so magical. Like, you guys were so amazing and supportive and wonderful. And I just felt that because the money was also going to OUR, there's such a purity to to this. There's no me going like, oh, that's me. I got to do it right. There's nothing. It's just like, this this is just such a fast transformation of love and growth. And we move so much quicker in this energy, you know? And I just, I just... Really, the prep, the prep work for you is now. There's not, like, you, if, you, if you have a giant thing next week, it's no more giant than now. Practice that. If you go, that, I, you know, I don't care what it is. Like, you could have the biggest interview of your life. This is the big job interview, or this is the biggest date. It doesn't, it's not as big as now. And you got to really not just hear that and go, good point. Some people, they, they hear the now to calm the mind. The now for me is to dissolve the mind, right? You don't want to just calm the mind and then let the mind still run everything and go back to the whole addictive world. The mind is based on a survival mechanism that you created to not get hurt. So instead of calming the mind, we free it. We free the child, so we keep being in the now. Not get in the now enough to then go back. Not meditate to calm it and then go back where the kid still runs it but is from a calmer place. This poor kid inside of each of us is done running it. It it wants to graduate. It wants to go. It's really kept, it's not even real. It's just a protective mechanism to not get bit by a dog again, to not get just scared Oh, don't feel that again. That kid took over. That kid took over for you until you could handle the transcending of trauma through a more mature body. But I just want you to be with the idea that this now is, is, is ready to transcend it. This now says, hey, you're now bigger than that trauma. You're able, you've grown up. You've grown, let's grow up. Like we've stayed adults that are still kid adults because our parents were 100% kid adults in most cases, right? Let's grow up. We're grown up, right? And if you really merge with this now, we, we get to grow. I want you to just picture a world now for a second where we're grown up where attachments are gone, where the charge is gone, where the triggers are gone. Like, let's be a collective of grown-ups, of, of you're a grown body that is capable of transcending that scary moment in your childhood. Just have the courage to choose it. The, the line of 200 on the Hawkins scale is courage. Courage, you've been using courage a lot. I believe anyone in here is way over 200. But you, you also can take the courage and move it to the deepest areas. I'm going to have the courage to, to see that moment when I was really scared. You don't have to be the scared five-year-old in a 40-year-old's body. You don't have to be that anymore. Have the courage to really sit and hear it and stop distracting from it. Have the courage to do something new. Let's be courage now. Like, I'm, I, I'm ready to be courageous and face whatever was the scariest moment in my childhood that I can't see. And I will listen for this poor kid as long as I need to. Could you, could you join me in that? I will listen. Like, this is going to be an event. This one right here is going to be where we actually change the whole thing. You're going to say out loud, I will listen to this kid as long as I need to. Say that out loud with me. I will listen to this kid as long as I need to. 
Imagine, I always love where there's one after, like straggler. <laughs> I will listen to this kid as long as I need to. As long as I need to. That's what I hear. <laughs> it's my favorite. Was it Kim? <laughs> I love it. I love it. But yeah, like really, let's decide today that we're, the, all the habits are is the bearing of the kid, right? Instead, I'm going to go to alcohol to not hear it. Why do you think you need all these chemical addictions? Because you're not in what's true. You're, you're playing a simulator inside of a game. This might also be a simulator, but at least let's connect with the most that we can and know of, right? But your pattern is just an argument with what is. That's why it always feels like shit. And I always feel there's two types of pain. There's the pain where you're numbing it, which is a temporary kind of whatever, alcohol, overeating, gossiping, just feeling false connection. There's that pain. I'm burying the ego or the pain of feeling through, the pain of being willing to listen to the kid and be lost for a while. Let's just be confused and lost because it goes, oh, I want you to go through lost. You've lived a life where you knew what to do all the time. I need you to experience loss now. I need you to experience alone now because it's not really alone because you're connected to God. It's just codependent. I'm going to feel lonely. That's codependency. We've normalized as bad, as loneliness, thanks to the conditioning of every love song and every movie in the world, right? I know I've talked about this before, but the love songs are so funny to me when you really think about it. They're beautiful songs, but I laugh so hard at songs like, I only have eyes for you, only you. Because the verses of that are, are the stars out tonight? I don't know if it's cloudy or bright. Now picture being this woman. <laughs> this dude won't look up because he's staring at you. <laughs> really, you're on a date with a guy that doesn't know if he's in traffic. That's the next verse. <laughs> are the cars, I can't remember what it's like, are we on a freeway or in a gar? I don't know if we're in a garden or a crowded avenue. <laughs> this is the most unsafe man this dude's staring at you on the freeway, and you're, you're supposed to be like, thanks, you should be, let's get out of harm's way, and let, let's discuss if I'm a good match for you. Be on a date with this guy. He's just, I only have a... You don't want that guy. That is a codependent song, right? And then there's all these songs like that. Just say you'll love me for the rest of your life because I can't go on. Oh, I'm responsible for your suicide. You can't go on if I don't say that I love you for the rest of my life. I have to love you, not God, not anyone else, just you. And that was normalized. We're sitting there listening to these songs. Ah, oh, it's so beautiful. I want to cry. And I want someone like that. I want someone that only has eyes for me and can't see if we're about to get hit by a car. That's my dream. <laughs> Love songs don't tell you, in most cases, the truth of what you are. We hear that's beautiful, and then we go, I want that life. I want codependency. That's love, codependency. No, nope, that's stuck attachment. Or all the movies where they move on and the person's just so hurt and you're just feeling for Jennifer Aniston as the person she dated left. And you can't believe what an asshole that guy is that he followed some other thing other than just Jennifer Aniston. Right? All these movies. You just what an asshole. And then we literally start to take that into our body. Like, you better not follow your heart. You better be that codependent thing. And then we go, that's love. This event, what you're creating, what you're you're so much more getting closer to what love actually is. It's now. It's healing. This is love, right? 
This is love right here. Now, now, this space, this chair that weirdly holds you no matter what you feel guilty about, it's fine. It doesn't care. The trees don't care about your past. The, all that stuff. Combine your, your heart with what is in the now. Connect with what is. Deep breath in. Release it. And whatever feels triggered or feels seen or feels excited, can you even be there in the now for what's excited? Like be the parent of a little kid. If you have a kid in you going, what could this imply? Even that, right? You're just there in the now. I see you. It's kind of like you can be the parent of the kid that's having so much fun, but also make sure they, they don't go too deep in the water. Like you're the mom at the edge of the dock. Okay, that's too deep. That's too deep because the kid's so excited. You can be the now. The now's like, it's fine. I'm right here. I'm connected to the now. <sighs> the now. It's the only thing true. Now. It's the only thing true. But every pattern that comes up is coming up to be freed. And the more you connect to the now, the more you open a portal, you're connecting more to the true expression of what you are. So you'd have to feel pain because what you're not is ready to fall out. More of what you're not is ready to fall out. The now just said all that, right? The now did. That wasn't Kyle. That wasn't the kid that, that wants to do good. That's why it can come through. You have that. You have the same now. We're all just radios, and we can all pick up the same music. That's why things start to get synchronistic. That's why your person that supercharged you might have said exactly what you were hoping for, Right? We're picking up the same thing. The problem we have is the kid is the radio getting credit for what the radio waves are playing. Right? The kid is the separate self that thinks the radio itself is what's playing Stevie Wonder. Right? When the music comes through, the radio is trying to get credit. You're what it's picking up. Right? You're what it's picking up. That's you. Receive what it's picking up. That's you. You got to get now. You got to get not excited. You can enjoy excited if it's there. Maybe the kid wants to experience excited, but you might be between being the radio and the radio frequency right now. Right? You're, you're in between. So you might feel the purge of the radio. The radio had to protect itself. Right? Because your parents were totally radios and not frequencies. Right? They were acting more like radios than radio waves. Right? So the parents were moving like radios and being small separate selves, repressing or whatever they were doing. So you learn that, but now you're here, weirdly in this time, you must have decided somehow or something must have sent you here to do something with this world. There must be a purpose for you much bigger than just to achieve and retire and get married. And th those can be there. But there must be a reason for you to be here. I want you to take in, not just at the level of everyone in the room, but imagine that I'm only looking you in the eyes and saying there's a specific reason that you were here so that you, you take this on and not wait for the collective to go, right? Picture that I'm telling you into your face, there must be a reason for you to be here on this planet that's so big and is beyond what your ego could measure. I sure hear that for me. And I go, okay, instead of me trying to look good to other people or trying to be a certain way or get dad to say good job, I release the attachment to the other radios of the world and go, what do you want? You see the difference? Instead of going, be bigger or better than other people when talk about other radios negatively, right? <laughs> Just, and because it, the people we're talking crap about are just stuck in their radios. How about we shine the frequency of them as radio waves, right? How about instead of us just shitting on people who are just stuck, the people we're mad at and don't like, maybe they're just stuck in a radio, right? So we release how we look to others or what we do with others or what they did to us and stop making any of that radio energy our God when we pick up radio waves.
receive the radio waves and become radio waves and watch as the world becomes radio waves with you. Watch as it becomes a miraculous, like it's worth doing this work because it will become a miraculous, magical, crazy, miracles will be normalized. Miracles normalize, that's the world we're gonna enter, right? It's normal for everything to be miracles. I want you to really hear that until it clicks in your mind as a fact, not Kyle's talking airy-fairy. Get it to be a fact in your mind. What would I have to become? What would I have to let go of? What radio energy would I have to let go of to move into radio waves? Right? You're going to become the radio waves of the world, and you're going to see the world become radio waves of the world. Because anyone that's doing anything bad, like child trafficking, is stuck in their radio. So we're going to make a radio wave world so they're not doing that anymore. You get this? Can you connect to what the now wants more than what you should do? Do you see the difference? Should do is radios, now radio waves. Pick up, like put your antenna up. I knew one person would actually do this, but that's great, that's great, awesome if you need to do that, right? Just feel the energy of your antenna up to hear the now, not try to be better or worse than anyone else, not try to shame yourself, that's all radio stuff. That's not what you are. Deep breath in, release it. 